I wanted to talk about a uh, a library I released recently. Um, So pure script heterogeneous. And uh, I think I kind of just wanted to do sort of like a like a live coding kind of thing with examples to kind of like get the idea over. I don't really have a big a presentation or anything. But the idea of pure script heterogeneous is uh, to do things like map and fold and stuff like that over uh, over things like records which are like normally we define those and we use those over things like uh, like lists or arrays or maps and stuff like that where uh, all the elements are the same type but there's also things like like records that have that, that can kind of be thought of as a container but where each element has a different type and so uh, and also no, I mean like that's the main one you would use in pure script but there you could there's other things like like an H list which is kind of like a Kind of like a tuple, like an extensible tuple type, um, where each element in the list has a different type, and th those are those are really the most common ones. And I think, but I think in pure script we mostly use uh, records. Um, and so, like with pure script zero dot twelve, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it, like with row lists, and uh, or with row list is like the like this is the new is kind of like the type level machinery. For talking about the rows in a record, like the the type, the the label and value pairs, and uh, by converting the representation of a type from like a row type to a row list, we can then write sort of like type level things over them that 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 operate recursively over it, and so you can like you can do all, lots of the the new cool stuff in in the Prelude is built off of that, so you can. You can do like equal over record. You can show records, stuff like that, and um, and a lot of the stuff around that is kind of uh, a little bit esoteric. I think uh, like the original the original question came or the what kind of inspired me to write this library was um, so there's this library pure script record extras which has like a some some uh, some like utilities over records that. Uh, are are nice that are uh, so like one of them is map record and um, the idea is that if you have a record where all the elements are the same type in this case a you can map a function over each one so like if we if you have a record like while records are all are to the type system are always heterogeneous if you have a record where everything is the same type there so you have just like a homogeneous record then you can map a single function over it so you can treat it like like just a regular map or something and um the type level machinery for stuff like this is, is a little out there like like just on the surface like I, I don't mean this is like an indictment of like this particular library or anything that's just like an aspect of like doing type level programming in pure script it can, it can get kind of hairy when like dealing with all the sorts of const the different kinds of constraints that you have to use all the the type level like the, all the variables you have to keep track of like the kind of state you have to keep track of and they, and it gets even like bigger and hairier with other stuff like thing like this one is zip record so the idea with like a zip record would be if you have a record of functions and you have another record of values well then you can like pair each label uh, in the one record with the functions with the value in the other record so you can kind of like zip them together sort of like an like, a, like an applicative operation and you can see like this one especially it's got you know tons of type parameters uh, it's got some functional dependencies it does like this whole record builder thing and so it just it, it builds up a lot of constraints and, and writing these things is, is kind of it's a little bit of a black art um, it feels like at times, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's non-trivial and it's kind of hard to understand. And uh, so like the particular example that inspired me to write this library is that someone wanted to do a map record, but the problem with like the existing signature for map record is that you have this A to, specifically this A to B function and that, that fixes it so that you have to know what A is up front and what the, what the person wanted to write was they wanted to be able to have the function be for all a, so I don't really care what the type is, but I wanted to take the a and maybe just like inject it into a list. 
like something like do a pure operation like this. So I, I, I don't want all the A's to be the same. I want them all to still be different, but I want to inject it into some other type. So it could be a list, it could be an array. And so then, so now they're all wrappers over whatever the existing type was. And you can't do that with the existing signature for map record. So if you tried to do that with map record, it, it just, it wouldn't work because it's still, the A is fixed ahead of time. And so doing anything with that will require all the elements to be the same type. So there's a, uh, you know, the only thing that's available then is to just re-implement all the machinery for map record, all that map record is doing, all this extra stuff. So there's like several constraints here, or so there's a type class to, rep to wrap it up. There's all these constraints in like record builders and stuff like that. And to, to do this operation, you have to like repeat that for something else. So there's a certain level of polymorphism that's missing from something like this. and um, the idea of pure script heterogeneous is to like the same way with homogeneous structures, how we have like this map and foldable where uh, we kind of separate the logic of actually like iterating over a structure and the logic of then like what kind of summary we're building or what we're doing with each element. Like those things are kind of split up and it, and it, it gives you a nice level of like utility reuse and, um, and it's like if we can do the same sort of thing, with heterogeneous structures because that means that if the person wanted to do this like we could write a, a map record implementation that iterates over a, of a record a record but then um it doesn't fix like the type to like a or b or you know so that forces it to be homogeneous that they could then kind of like stamp out um an operation for each element in the structure and so the idea with, with the, I mean, that's kind of like the idea with pure script heterogeneous. What, what makes it, what makes these sort of heterogeneous operations interesting or what makes them even kind of like difficult is because you're usually working with constraints. So like if you wanted to do like a, like a, a show operation over it. So if you were doing some hypothetical map record and you wanted to do show and over like maybe you had foo was, an int and bar was a was a uh, was a boolean or something we want to be able to take this function show which is for all a show a a to string and we want to be able to instantiate this like this dictionary the show dictionary for each member so that when i'm mapping over a record it sees an int well i can then specialize this to an int to string you know, and then when I see the bar, which is a Boolean, then I can do, you know, Boolean to string. So that's, that's where you kind of like get into the trick of how to work with heterogeneous structures is that usually you're working with constraints. And because they have to work for each element in it, the only way to have that level of polymorphism is with constraints and is like working over constraints. So if you try to do this with just the existing map record, this this show operation you'd get a type error because show it because the map record still wants just some a to b it's not polymorphic like like the person who get the function that's given to map record you know it can't work for any a as long as it's show the a has to be decided up front and so it could only work with uh records of like of int or where everything is an int or everything is a boolean or something like that and so so then you get into how can I like stamp these out? And the only way to do that is through pure scripts constraint system. And so if you wanted to implement a map record where everything could be shown, which is essentially just like what the show does, like the, the prelude instance for records does is that you have to have, um, you kind of have to specialize it. So you have to do like this, write this whole class map record show. And then, you know, it takes some like input rows and then for each, you want to get like a row list out of it. And then for each, for each member, you want to be able to get like a show dictionary out of it. And then you'll have like all your other record, your record things. And just so you can call show within the, within the body of it. So like you'd be doing like map record show where, and you have some like input values. I, I'm just like, it's just mo it ends up mostly just being boilerplate just so you can say show for whatever the value is. And you're going to be doing like record, you know, show, 
record.get or something, you know, for whatever the input record is. And so you're, you'll, en you'll end up re-implementing all of the same boilerplate over and over again. And so the idea with PureScript heterogeneous is that we can like hook into the constraint system and as we walk over these structures, we can instantiate these constraints for each member of it. So writing something like that ends up being quite easy. And um, so as an example, I wanted to look at, just like go through some examples. And um, so like, like the show example. So we wanna be able to write like this uh, show record values. And it's gonna have, you know, some input rec set of rows and then it's gonna have some sort of output set of rows. And so we'll just start like filling this in. So I'm gonna have like a record of R1. And they're all gonna be strings, but I have to like generate that, like the, the new mapping of labels to just string values. So I can't, really, I can't really express that with just like normal pure script code. You have to use the constraint system to do that. And um, so we wanna look at like, well, what the, what the constraint would be. And pure, and pure script heterogeneous, exports these different like abstractions as like hmap and hfold l and stuff like that so we can do hmap go ahead and import predicate 2 and hmap has like the signatures of these are actually very are, are really general and they almost don't mean anything on their own so like hmap is it's just a multi parameter type class fab you know, you, we've got some something that we're going to use, some f that we're going to use to instantiate constraints, and we're going to have some input type and some output type. So the type of HMAP on its own doesn't really tell you a whole lot um, because it has to be so general. Because we're do, we're transforming one type to a totally different type, there's no way to specify like some spine in PureScript. So like the type system itself isn't isn't really a uh, expressive enough to do something like that to like fix it to like an input record and it has to be an output record so we don't have like kind polymorphism and stuff like that so it's it's a little bit primitive in that it's just going to be some input type and some output type so it's it's actually not quite as specific as it could be but um i don't know what my f is going to be yet because i haven't implemented it yet but the idea is that i'm going to i'm going to show it use something to stamp out show constraints and it's gonna have an input record of R1, output record of R2 for whatever that is. We don't know what those things are. Like we want to implement something that, uh, that will like, it turns everything into a, into a string. It's gonna be a constraint. And um, go ahead and show record value equals HMAP. And yeah, that's a question. Um, so like you, you were talking about this pure script records um, extras um, mm -hmm. as kind of like a motivation for this library, right? Mm -hmm. um, did, did I hear correctly and that um, this library is uh, kind of intended to help with the boilerplate of working with uh, these record constraints? Uh, that's that's one application of it. So it's a little more broad. It's broader than that. And like PureScript Record Extras is some. It's just is another library. I think it's one that Justin Justin Wu wrote, and um, and it's just like general utilities for working with records. So it has like zip record and stuff like that. But so you can't like implement your own. It doesn't do like its own. It doesn't implement its own things for like doing general purpose operations over records. And so PureScript heterogeneous is kind of like a system of uh, of like just working with heterogeneous structures in general. So does so, this include like that extensible tuple idea that you mentioned? Yeah, um, I mean it doesn't it doesn't define it doesn't define that data type. Called, that, like an extensible tuple. Yeah, it doesn't define that data type, but it's just what that's you could you could develop something like that. Uh, okay. but actually um, I'm going to I'm going to like pause for a minute and I'm gonna have to move. So mm -hmm. sorry about that one second.
All right, sorry about that. So yeah, so, so pure script heterogeneous, like just, it defines like an abstraction kind of like map and foldable. So map and foldable don't define like a specific data type. You know, it just defines an abstraction that another data, like a data type can implement. And then you can use it to either map or fold over like, over generally over any structure. And so it's the same, it's the same sort of thing as, as map and fold over homogeneous structures, but for heterogeneous things. And so in this case, I, I, you know, I, I want to implement something that works over records. And just for, just for like this example, I'm going to like specify that I'm working over a record, but we're going to, but you can actually, you can swap that out so that it's not necessarily a record, but, uh, so there's an instance of this HMAP type class. Right, right, right. Already. So, uh, this actually needs to be, so I just want to start like filling this in. And, and like right now, like most of it's going to be kind of, kind of, it's, it's a, the types are pretty general. But the idea is that I can, because I have to work within the constraint systems of pure script, you can't use normal functions. Like as we, as we kind of like saw with map record, like the, 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 homogeneous implementation of it. It's not, there's, there's a level of polymorphism that's missing that we can't like stamp out constraints with it because it ends up, everything ends up being fixed to a specific type. And if we want to do other things with constraints, we then have to like re-implement all this stuff over and over again. And so uh, like functions on their own aren't really expressive enough to do, for, to deal with this level of polymorphism where we want to be able to dispatch constraints on each heterogeneous type member of, of our whatever structure we're, we're dealing with. And so we have to hook into PureScript's constraint system. And the way you dispatch constraints in PureScript is through a data type. So instead of using like uh, just an anonymous function or something, you know, just or just passing in show, we're going to use a named data type to represent the operation we want to do. And we use that to dispatch constraints through PureScript's type system. So we, we could do like data, you know, uh, show, we'll just, call it show member and this there's nothing it's just a simple it's just a unit data type something here there's nothing there's nothing really to this data type it's just a name that we use to dispatch something within pure scripts type system and the way we dispatch these so that we can instantiate like a show constraint for each member is that we implement there's a type class called mapping that HMAP uses. So it, whenever you're doing like an HMAP, it requires, it requires an instance of mapping over what F, whatever we're trying to dispatch. And it uses mapping to instantiate those constraints. So instead of implementing, so we, all, we always have to have like a name type to dispatch, but then we define like our operation that we want to do as an instance of mapping. So we can do instance show member, and that's going to be an instance of mapping mapping show member and mapping is a similar type to HMAP and that it's just it's also an FAB type so it takes like it's dispatching off of our operation and there's going to be an input type and an output type so specifically mapping show member is going to take some a because we don't care about what a is all we care that it's show and it's going to give output a string and then we're going to do you know show a so that's going to be our constraint for it and we do, we just implement show member and we're going to take our A and we're going to do show A. We make sure we import show. Oh, it's already in prelude, of course. And we're going to dispatch that with our data type instead of a function. Oh, we got to import mapping. And so now it's compiles. Now there's just a wildcard type definition has show member. And so now this compiles. And so it's going to give us, uh, we're going to dispatch with show member and we get an input record and an output record. And the type level machinery works such that it'll take out all the values, instantiate an A here, and then output a string. And so this type of R2 is going to be the same as all the labels that were in R1, but they're all set to string. And so let me uh, turn off that. And so 
I'm going to bring up this. And so let's do reload and show record values. Show record value. And we're going to pass in a record now. So we're going to get A. Let's do 42, B, true. If we run that, you'll see that now we get a record back and all the values are strings. And so if we actually do, we, we look at like the type, we can look at the type of this, show record value. The input type, you know, has an A and a B, or A is an int, the B is a Boolean. But if we look at the type of show record value, see it's gonna give us the out, it's gonna do all the mapping of the record types to string. So it dispatches the show member constraint the show member data, to, or, you know, the implement, implementation of mapping, which turns the input type into string, and it applies that mapping over the record. And so do, using this, you can actually, we don't even have to specify what are, they don't have to be a record. So R1, R2. So this is actually unnecessarily uh, specific over records. I don't have a lot of, frankly, I don't, you don't have a lot of heterogeneous data structures, but this can work over things other than records as well. So right now, this doesn't even have to work with records. We could, uh, let me import. So I actually have this HList implementation. And uh, let's work with, let's do that. So test, or try, I haven't, I haven't tried this ahead of time, so it may not even work. So import test HList. And so hList has some constructors here. It's got hcons and it's got hnil. And so let's rename this to show values. All right, and now we've got import. Let's do reload. Show. Uh, Got to re-import it. Show, show values. Okay, so we got show values, and we're gonna do. Uh, uh, actually, I may not have an instance of show, but I'll, I'll just do the type for now. So let's do let's show that let's do the type of show values over an H list, and so we're gonna do a twelve, and we're gonna do a true. I'm gonna do an H nil. And you'll see that is, uh, hasn't fixed the type. It's, it's a little, I guess it's maybe, uh, let's try using it. It may not infer it now just because the output type is too, too general. But yeah, there's no, I don't have a uh, show instance. But the idea is that you, it, in, when I, if, I had, if I had done it ahead of time where I could implement it for, uh, for H list as well, then it would work as well. So it's just saying that it doesn't have, uh, um, let's do, let's make sure this still works. Show values. See, so show value still works. I, I had everything still input. It's just, I'm missing some implementations for H list. And so the type of show values, because even though now it's not mapping to record types in particular, the show value still correctly infers the, uh, the output type where everything is mapped to string. And so doing this, you can do lots of, uh, lo you know, lots of, uh, you can reduce a lot of boilerplate. So like in, specifically in that, in the, original, in, in the original kind of motivation was that somebody wanted to write like a pure operation to work over records so that it could like wrap everything in a maybe or something like that. And so you can, you can implement that um, so we can do maybe pure member where, and it's going to operate over some F type to type and it's going to take a function that is for all a, and it's going to do, you actually, you don't even need to do this. Well, yeah. I mean, if we want, if we don't want to inject, we could do it to actual pure. 
but let's go ahead and inject like the actual function. So we're gonna do instance pure member, and we actually don't need any constraints because the constraints are, uh, the, we don't, we're, not, we're not carrying anything, we're, we're boxing up the actual function. So that's in the data type, so we don't need any additional constraints. Pure member is gonna be an A, and actually pure member is parameterized by F, pure member F, and it's gonna output an F of A. And so mapping, pure. Uh, you'll need an argument in that, R in that function on line 21. Uh, for all A. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah. And so it's going to take like its input type and it's just going to apply F to that, like that. And so now we can do pure values. And it's going to be for all, R, maybe R12, R2, HMAP. We need an F. And this is going to be a pure member F. And we're going to take our function. So our function is going to be for all A, A to F of A. And then we're going to take our input type and generate our output type. So pure values is now we're going to take our F here and it's going to do HMAP pure member. F. Oh, syntax. All right, so that compiles. And now if we reload and re-import, and now we do pure values. Let's do, uh, so we can, imp let's import data.maybe, maybe. And we'll just use like the just constructor. So, uh, pure values, we're gonna pass in just, we're gonna do A42, B is our Boolean. You'll see there that it wraps just, and you also get the correct type. So if we just do the type of this, you'll see that it's a maybe in and a maybe Boolean. So I haven't had to re-implement all the crazy boilerplate for working with record operations. You'll see all I had to do was define a data type so that we can instantiate our types for each member, and then we implement a mapping instance for that. And it's, and it's really, you're just defining a function, but you, it just has to be dispatched through the uh, constraint system, which is what, what all this is doing. So there's, there's minimal boilerplate. We haven't had to implement anything crazy. And the other example I really like is, and again, this isn't an indictment of this, of, of this library, but just to show like how much boilerplate we can reduce. So like zip record, like if there's a lot going on with like a zip record operation. And there's lots of stuff to keep track of, um, like within the type system, because you want to make sure everything is a function in one record, and then you want to be able to compute the output type. So you can take your, your other record, and you want to compute the output type of the new record by what the function types are. And so zip record, is actually, and I think it's a really good example for this framework because it's almost trivial. So we wanna do like zip, let's do zip member. And uh, we're gonna take some input record, some record that has functions in it, but we don't really have to do anything with that. So it's, just, it's actually a new type. <coughs> Excuse me. New type. Zip. And most of these can actually be new types if they just take parameters, because we're just using like the name to dispatch. So zip member, and that's a mapping. And the, what's interesting about this is that it's actually a mapping uh, with index. So like where, so we have, there's like foldable with index, map or functor with index. So if there's something like, like, like with an array or a map, and you have some sort of index value into it, which might be a, whatever the key type is on a map or integers for arrays, you can get that index value. And records have a natural index value, which is the label for the field. And so zipping a record is really similar, uh, you know, but with mapping with index, let's just take, let's just get our S proxy. So this gives, let's just get our, our, name, our, our, our label out. So we're gonna use, we're gonna get a symbol out of it. And so, the, uh, the index 
uh, for this operation is an X proxy, X proxy sim. And so zip member is going to take, the member has to be, we don't care what the A is, and, or we actually, we need, we of course need to dispatch our function. So we have zip member R, S proxy, which is our index. We're gonna have some input type now. We don't know what, it, it's whatever it is. We don't care what it is. And it's gonna have some output type B. And so we have to compute that now with our constraints. And so a zipping operation will take whatever the, whatever the input type A is, take the symbol, look up the property in our record of functions, and then apply that function to A to get B out of it. To do that, we use, we use a row cons, uh, a row cons constraint. And so we're gonna import, let's go up to the top here, import. And row cons takes our, our symbol, it's gonna pull out some function of A to B from, oops, from our record, R, and then we don't really care what, the, what that is. So we're just gonna substitute some variable like that. And the implementation of this is kind of what you would expect in that we get our zip member, or we get our record, we get our, our, prop, our property, we'll call it prop, and we'll get our input type. And so we're gonna do, rec we're just gonna get do record.get of the property and our record. So we're gonna look up our function and we're just gonna apply that to A. So now let's do zip record. We're gonna do, or actually we can, we'll zip record because our input type is so we'll have our, again, have our, our record of functions. So we'll call this, you know, RFNs. Then we're gonna have our input record and our output record type. We're gonna do, instead of HMAP, we're gonna do HMAP with index. And that's gonna be, uh, zip number R. I think yeah. you have I number there, don't you, Nate? Do um, you've got zip member R, which must be a type, and then you're using row cons on R. So I think there's a record missing somewhere now. Um, I don't think so. The record is, we put the record in zip member, so zip member carries around our input record. Okay, all right. So, so and then it's just gonna compute R1 and R2. And so we wanna take our input RFNs, or what, well, you, you're right about right here, this needs to be RFNs. And so we're gonna take our input record, RFNs, and, um, oh, oh, you mean like over the type, yes. So let's do this, we'll do this. Yeah, exactly. That's what we want. Yes, you're right, absolutely. Um, take our record of our input, input records, and then we're gonna take our, get our input type and our compute our output type. So zip record ends up being uh, HMAP with index, zip member RFNs. And syntax, this is no, oh, missing a constraint. So this says, I'm just missing an is symbol constraint. So in order to actually look up the field, we need an is symbol constraint for our symbol. And so we just add that here is symbol uh, sim. There we go. Compiles, uh, no type errors. So now let's do, let's reload and import our examples again. So now let's do zip record. So we'll do A is We'll do, um, we'll do plus one, and then B, we'll do, we're gonna do not. So, so, so one problem, one issue in just in pure script in general is that like g really general constraints, like, so like not is, the function not is not specialized to Booleans. It's actually like hating algebra and all, and you got like all this other stuff with it. 
And um, so when doing things in records, it's actually, you oftentimes have to specialize your function. So we're gonna do not, and we're just gonna specify type. Just so that it's, uh, the types work out. So we're gonna do A here, we're gonna do 12, we're gonna be false. I don't know, oops. And you'll see there it added one to A and it flipped the false to true. So we've implemented a type, you know, this type safe zip operation without any boilerplate. So it's like all we've done is defined our data type that packages up our argument and then we dispatch that through the constraint system. And, uh, and so you can also, the types stay the same, um, but it doesn't have to, it does, in this example it's staying the same, but we can change it to something else. So, so let's do show. So if you, now if we do show here, you'll see that now, and, and the type would also be different. So now we've got an A string and a B Boolean. So it's zipped all these, these functions together with you know, an input record and an output record. And it's kind, of, it's kind of weird just because like it feels kind of magical, just like it all just kind of computes it. Like I haven't actually had to define anything here that does any sort of like mapping of these types. And that's what's, that's what's really neat about it is that I haven't had to, the only mapping I've done is for each member for like this A to B, this mapping of A to B, looking up the function type. And so it all just kind of like works through the type system and it, and it just kind of works out. Um, and so it, there's lots of really, especially when you get into things like instance chains, there's, there's really cool things you can do with it. So like, uh, like one example, so like this pure, this pure member one, we, we supply a function and it's fixed for each type. And, um, but what if we wanted to implement like a, uh, like a traverse or something? Or actually, let, 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 let's do that, let's do that second. I think a good, like a good, a good example to show off, it would be like the H fold. So doing like a fold over it. And so this is something that's actually like really, um, normally when you do a fold, you're thinking of each thing being the, the same type and then the accumulator is the same type. But because we're working with heterogeneous structures, you oftentimes, like you can compute the same type, like the same accumulator type, but, but with, uh, with, hetero with pure script heterogeneous, you can actually have an accumulator type that changes. And so this is really good for like build record stuff. So like row or record builders. So record builders work over a category instance where it's, it's really, a, it's kind of like a function from some input record type to, to a different output record type. And so with like the heterogeneous machinery, you can, you can build a, a like, like this, what I call like a type align fold where the, uh, the accumulator type changes and it depends, the output accumulator type depends on the input accumulator type, but it can, but it changes as, as it, as it folds over the structure. But, uh, but if we wanted to implement something like uh, show record, so like show record, um, we want to build up a string. So our accumulator type doesn't change; it just builds up a string. But we want, but we want to like do like the show over it, uh, so that it requires like a, us instantiating that dictionary. And um, it's actually super easy to implement this with now with like a heterogeneous fold. So let's do. Uh, Again, it's the, same, it's the same process of where you define a data type and then you use that to dispatch. But, so we're gonna do like our, our, our uh, fold member or show fold, let's do fold. It's just a unit type again. But instead of using like an instance of mapping, we have this, this other type called, this other type class called folding. And it's, a, it's the same principle, oh, I'm in the wrong module. It's the same principle, it's just, and again, it's like it's got like this kind of weird general type that is really too broad, but it's, it's kind of what we have to work with. Um, and implementing an instance of folding, we can then instantiate a fold for each member. And so it's just the same, the same idea of folding. 
And the folding type is, it depends on, like the order of arguments depends on, on like right now I've only written like an implementation for left folds just because uh, I just didn't get around to it, but like doing like right folds and stuff, but this is, it's the same idea. And so the order of arguments is the same as with fold L. So fold L, like your, your function is gonna take the accumulator type and it's gonna take your input type and return a new accumulator. But since this is heterogeneous, it can actually, the output accumulator can actually be a totally different type. And so we're going to take our input accumulator, we're accumulating strings, or actually we want to, of course, dispatch, hold, show member. So it's going to take an input string, our type, and it's just going to do another string. The accumulator type doesn't change. Of course, we want show A. And we're gonna do uh, uh, our accumulator and our value. And what we can actually do is, so uh, we wanna like, in, so if we're do, showing like a whole record and we're accumulating a string, we wanna, we wanna insert like commons and stuff. And so one thing we can do, actually as a first pass, we can do an, uh, an array of strings. Or we'll do an array of strings instead. And so now it's just going to be a matter of array.cons. I don't have a, let's do, let's do this. So we're going to do our, our accumulator type and we're going to do A. So we're just in show A. So for now, this is all we're going to do. We're just building up some spine of all of our values shown as a uh, shown as a string, but we're just going to build an intermediate array. And so then our show record. How, I've got a question. How does that fold show member get used in that instance? So the fold show men it's a data type, and the data type the name data type is just how we dispatch constraints in pure script. So the only way to implement instances is if you have a data type. And because we're using instances to stamp out like our kind of like our polymorphic things, we have to create a data type to represent what we want to do. And we just use that to dispatch. So this is actually, this is really unnecessary. I just use it for alignment, you know, cause it's nice, but you can, you can just ignore that. It's kind of like using proxies to dispatch a type. So we just use that to dispatch the constraints we write our instance over our data type and then provide that to like H fold L or whatever. It's a way to choose this instance. Yes, exactly. And that's how, that's how we, that's how we actually choose, you know, choose this implementation is by passing in the fold show member data. Type. Okay. So when, when we, when we write the function, which uses this instance, we have to use that same data type. Fold yeah, show. you exactly. Exactly. So we just have our input, our, our, our one, record type, so we'll just call it R. And we'll do H fold L. And H fold L is, uh, we're gonna fold with fold show member. And we're gonna have our, uh, you know, part of the problem with this too is just like membering, remembering like the type, <laughs> the type parameters. It's like, because the constraint system, the type system is kind of, it's kind of like, really fluid and so sometimes like if you write nonsense the, the type system won't complain right away it'll complain when you try to use it because the constraint it generates doesn't make sense but like up front you don't always know you've done it wrong until you actually try to use it so that's one thing that's kind of frustrating about you know the type level programming stuff with constraints is that it doesn't always tell you if you, what you're trying to do is nonsense until you actually try to do something with it so it's so fold the fold within the H fold takes an X, which is our, uh, our accumulator type. Then it takes our input type and then generates the output type. And so because they're not necessarily the same, like the accumulator type is not necessarily the same as the output type or uh, the, for the initial accumulator type. So it's a really like an initial accumulator type. So that uh, I'm, I'm looking to see, I'm trying to find where the, uh heterogeneous, like where that happens here. 
and it looks like this H fold L should have something that looks like um, heterogeneous uh, logic here, but, but it's such a simple type class. Right, um, like, so the, yeah, so, you, so the implementation, so for, for records, um, what it does, oh, I gotta find the right one, H fold L record. So an implementation of this, uh, and what this actually does, it's using cons folding. So it's using, so there's, uh, there's also fold L with index. And so the fold over a record is implemented in terms of fold L, fold folding within, or fold L with index. And it uses the, this const folding wrapper to ignore the index. So there's only one single implementation which folds over a record, which is down here. Uh, that's tuple, and there's row list. And so the instance defers to the row list implementation. So it's kind of like folding over a row list and building a record. And so folding with index, it uses this record.get. And the mapping one is really cool too, because it's super simple, and it's just using the builder to, uh, to run a new, to, to build a builder over the record type. And so that's, re that's really all it looks like. It's just constraints. Okay, and so it still does use um, a lot of the similar type classes and such that Record Extras was using. Yeah, but it's just, it's, it kind of puts it underneath a different uh, interface. Right, exactly. You don't have to deal with that manually by like writing manual instances. Like all those constraints have to exist. Like those constraints, it's not, it's not as if those constraints are inessential. Um, it's just you don't, now you no longer, you don't have to deal with them. You don't have to like think about them as far as when writing something that folds over a record or something that maps over a record, all you have to deal with is this H fold L type or this H fold L class and an H map class. And so we're going to take our input R and we're going to first pass, we're going to produce a string. So right now this is just showing, this is just accumulating all of them in an array and it's showing them. Um, so, Let's do H fold L, and it's gonna. We're gonna do fold show member, and we're gonna do our initial accumulator type. So we've got a type error. Oh, I've got a uh, right. What's that? There we go. And go to our terminal. Let's do load, re-import. Let's see, let's see if this works out. Like I said, you, you don't know, if, is, it may compile, but you may, not, you may not know that your constraints are totally bogus until you actually try to run it. So show record, let's do A12, B true. And you'll see there, it's built an array with 12 and true. And so using this now, we can do our, uh, we're gonna add our, we're gonna build, instead of an array string, we're gonna build, let's build our whole string. And we're gonna do, um, is it intercalate? But I guess we couldn't get the names of the keys there, the names of the fields. Um, because that's oh that's yeah yeah you can like yeah we'll 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 yeah. add we'll add we'll go through and add that so let's do this is just first pass stuff so we'll go through and yeah because I'm using H fold just folding uh, or just fold L then um, there we go. Oh, let's reload. And see there, now it's the whole string and it's got just the values 12 and true with a comma in the middle. So now we want to actually show the property as well. So we're going to do folding with index. Ah, uh, with index, yeah. Because we want to get the, yeah, our index type. And folding with index just takes our X, S proxy now, our symbol. We're going to do our prop here and we want to be able to sh show it and that's what is 
where we want to be able to get a string from that. So that's what is symbol does. And now we can do, now we can do uh, the reflect symbol. Yes, reflect symbol prop and show A. So that Save. index, if it was an H list, it would be like some integer. Um, yeah, yeah, like it, would, it, would, it would be a type yeah. level integer. Yeah, so now when we do show records, oh, I've, I'm using the wrong. So you'll see like this one implements folding with index, but our H fold L only uses folding. And so now you'll see like the inferred type, this doesn't make sense. It, it just, because it needs folding for fold show member, but that doesn't exist. And so it can't dispatch it. So we'll want to do H L, H fold L with index. And we're going to use H fold L with index here. Now let's reload it. You'll see, look, now it's printed with the labels. We can do this. Now we've got our kind of our nice record print. And that's building an array of string, but we don't have to do that. We don't, we can just build it as we go as well. Hey, I missed how you get from folding with index to H fold L with index. So H fold L with index is our actual, this is like fold for, or fold L or fold with index for a normal homogeneous data type. And so folding with index is a class that H fold L with index uses to instantiate all the different constraints you, it needs for each member. And so when you want to write a, a folding function, so, so if we were writing this over a homogeneous data structure, it'd be like just fold L and we would do, we'd do like maybe an anonymous function and that's gonna take our fold, let's do fold L with index. So like a normal homogeneous data type, it'll take its index type, its, accum its accumulator type and the value and, uh, and you know, it would do this, what we're doing above. And it would do like show, it would maybe show the index, whatever it is, I don't know. And then do, and then also show the A type. And so we're just building, it's the same, same, same idea, but we can just use an anonymous function because the types all, like the types for each member are exactly the same. Oh, okay, okay. So folding with index is the folding function for the- Yes, so, so folding with index is the, is the type class you have to implement so that the constraint system can instantiate all the constraints for each heterogeneous member. Got it, so, got it. So, so we kind of like, instead of writing an anonymous function, we have to write a data type to dispatch these constraints. Right. And then we write an instance of folding with index. And so we can only, we can reason about it in terms of just each step, right? Instead of like implementing this whole like thing that traverses over a record and you have to like do, you kind of mix in all like the, the state that all the type variables and the state you have to keep track of. So now we only have to implement folding with index and that lets us reason about each step just kind of locally. And then we can use H fold L with index to run it. Cool, thanks. And so, you know, you can, you don't, we don't have to build like this intermediate one as well. We can do, we can build a string on its own. So our accumulator is a string. So let's do, maybe we'll do this. So maybe if accumulator is an empty string, then uh, we don't need a comma. And so we'll just do this. Show A, and then otherwise, we'll do, we'll insert a prefix comma, and then just do the same thing. And so now, you don't have to do this like intercalate stuff. We're just doing, uh, oops. Yeah, my, uh, there we go. Now we can get rid of this intercalate. Got 
Oh, we don't. That. Uh, so now we can go back, reload, and show record. And oh, I am missing. I think I'm missing. Uh, I'm missing something. Accumulator use? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm forgetting to. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm forgetting to do accumulator. There we go. Thank you. So now show record is the same thing, but we have we haven't built like an intermediate data structure or have to do anything. We can build it directly, and uh, so again, it's the same idea. But like if to, I I may uh, like when you get into like instance chains and stuff, you can do some really cool stuff. So one thing that I always thought would be really cool is say I have a record of. Uh, where some of the properties, not necessarily all of them, say they're like maybe. So I'll, I'll, maybe I have a record type like this, where A is an int, B is a maybe string, and C is a maybe string. And what I want to do is I want an automatic way to then get to do a traverse over the things that are maybe, or a sequence over the things that are maybe, and then I can just get out a record of type int, B string and C string. So it's gonna, I, I want something that can kind of in general figure out that I wanna get a maybe out of it. It'll find all the things in the record that are maybe, and then it will sequence those and then just get the value out of them. And so this is, this is really nice when I have like a record that might have a lot of partial fields, but uh, I want a case where all the fields are not are all there and uh, I don't want to manually write that and so this is something that you can do with this framework and uh, and this is like a good showcase for uh, for like these type aligned folds because what we're what we want to do is we want to build a new record so we want to fold over our old record and use the record builder to then build a new record with the things sequenced in them and so let's do, uh, we want to define our data type. So we'll do our, let's do fold sequence member. And this is really just a phantom type. So we want to be able to track like what data type we want to sequence. So our functor whatever our, or our, whatever, whatever our, applic our applicative is. So this is kind of like sequence for records, but it's doing some other, some other magic to where it's just figuring out, it's just discriminating the ones that map, that map to our applicative F. So this is a, this is kind of like a proxy. This is just a proxy. It carries around type information, but it has no other actual evidence because it's determined by our return type. So if we're gonna do sequence record, we're to look at what this type might be. We'll have an R1 and an R2 and an F. And we're gonna have some H fold L with index magic, but I don't know what it is yet. Some, uh, and it's gonna take our input record and then it's gonna generate Depending on what F we want, this is this is called this is like return type polymorphism here. Depending upon like the uh, what F we want, it's gonna it's gonna build this build and dispatch this. And so we want our fold sequence. Remember, and it's gonna have our F type associated with it. And then uh, I don't know what the accumulator type is yet, what our initial type is, but our input type is gonna be our R1. And our output type, we don't know what our output type is either. So that's kind of like our framework that we're working with. And so we wanna be able to implement this, this, this fold, folding with index instance for fold sequence member. Folding with index, we're gonna have our data type, dispatching, fold sequence member, and F. 
Then we're going to take, um, have, we have our S proxy. This is our index type. Then we're going to have our input accumulator type, which we don't know our value and our output accumulator type. And, but we, what we want to do is we want to discriminate on whether this is actually F of A, whether this is some F. So we're going to do, we're going to have our case for F of A. And what we're actually going to be also have is an else case, else instance. So for everything else that is not this F of A, we don't want to do anything. We just want to leave it as is. And this is going to have a different signature. F, same as proxy sim, but it's just going to be A. So we have two different instances of this chain together with an, inst with an instance chain. So it's gonna, first it's gonna try to see, discriminate based upon our functor. And then otherwise, if it's not our functor, then it's going to fall back to this instance. So let's go ahead and we wanna make sure, cause we're, we're doing a sequence which requires an applicative. So we're gonna need applicative F. And, um, we're gonna use our record builder. So we're gonna start with a builder. And builder has an input record type and an output record type. And it's also, we're gonna output another builder, but it's gonna, but the type is gonna be changed. The type is gonna change. And so it's gonna have actually a different, um, so we're gonna have our R1 here. And that's actually going to stay the same because the input type stays the same, but the output type changes. So we're going to have our R2 and it's going to output to R3. You can do. Oh, you didn't put R3 there. Oh, whoops. You're right. R3. And so. We're just going to align these to make it easier to see because sometimes it gets kind of lost with a output builder type. So we'll see this is our, so our folding function takes our accumulator of builder from R1 to R2 and then it's going to take some F of A and then it's going to return another a builder with the output type change. So we're going to append some sort of operation to it. And, uh, And what that operation is, is it's, go it's going to um, do that sort of like applicative operation where it's going to like discriminate using the applicative instance. It's going to like, it's going to do like the, the applicative thing over our value and produce a new a record from within that applicative context. Folding with index. And we're going to take our prop. And then we're going to take our builder b1 and then our applicative value a call it fa and uh we're going to use applicative over this and we have to kind of figure out what we're going to do here and so uh this operation is uh we need uh i may have to cheat I wrote all this out, and so I may have to. Like, I, may, I may have to take a sneak peek. It's not. Uh, it's not pure. Um, um, let me see. There we go. Okay, so we got our, like our input type, and then we want to because we want our our operation that we're doing is the. Uh, is the uh, category thing is what we're doing. And then we're gonna take our, uh, let's copy this over. It's easier than me trying to stumble through it. There we go. And, oh, that's, yeah, because we're in an applicative context. There we go. That's what I was missing. Mm 
insert prop over f of a. There we go. And so what this does is we're going to use our category category instance. We're going to map this over b1 to kind of pre-apply it. And then we're going to use the applicative ins instance to insert the property of it over f of a. So we're going to map insert over uh, our f of a. And so what that ends up What's that, what that ends up doing is that it uses the applicative instance to, um, to then build a new record. And one, if we start doing this, we'll get a bunch of type errors. Because it'll say like, uh, symbol with, um, oh, yes, full. So this is fold sequence member. There we go. Now we're going to get like our constraints are missing. So no. So this is something that we you can do with type level programming is that you kind of type out what you want to do and then have it tell you what all of the constraints are needed. So we need a row cons. Row dot cons and that's sim a r two r three, sim a r two r three. We got a New one, row lax, sim r. Which one was that? R2. Now we got another one, symbol. Of course, we always need the symbol. And there we go. So that compiles. And now we want to do the same thing here, but we're not actually, we're not, because we know it's not an A, we're just going to insert the property wholesale. We don't have to do anything. We know. This is our fallback case for things that aren't an instance or aren't like our, our applicative type. We're gonna do our prop, our B1. Um, and our A value. And let's do start. It's gonna have the This, it's the same types, but it's going to have different constraints. It's going to have fewer constraints. And what this is, because we're just going to, we just, all we need is a map operation now. So we can just do builder dot insert prop. We're going to do, uh, so we have our A, we just want to insert that. We just want to insert the A. We're just going to map that. Actually, we want to pre apply. Map that over our B1. We're going to have some. Missing constraints. We don't have. We're using our functor, and we need that. So functor f. Row cons r two r three. And then is of course. Always. And so now that type checks. So this is kind of what we're wanting to do is it's pretty complex um, and that we're using a builder, but the actual, and so there's still quite a few constraints and the types of the builders have to change, but the actual implementation is just each one is just a one line of like actual runtime code. And that's going to have an input type of builder. It's going to start from an empty builder that doesn't do anything. So just, it's an identity builder. And it's then going to map to a builder. It's going to have that and then R2. And so sequence. We're going to take our R1 
and this is going to be fold L with index. And we're going to do fold sequence member. And we want to give it the uh, the acute. We don't need this argument. We're going to do the accumulator value, which is just which is uh, identity. And that's. I don't think I need this, but just for just for uh, illustration purposes. And let's try to save that and fold L with index. Oh, I want H4, of course. Could not match. Oh, right, we need to do more stuff. So that gives us uh, an F out of it, but we need to, we, want, we need to run our builder. So we're building a record, but we want to get the record out. So we have to do builder dot run is it uh, built it's going to take our initial value and uh, we want to map that and this is cannot match type record oh um, oh right record with F1, um, let's do this, type holes, see if they work out. So type holes tell us we, type holes tell us we need, hole A has the inferred type builder, oh, so this was the, uh, this is where I was telling you that sometimes, this can be the hard part. where uh, uh, that's going to tell us we don't have applicative. That's the hard part, where sometimes they, you don't know what you're doing wrong. You're kind of filling in the types here. And so you kind of have to, that's the part that can be confusing. So now we have a better type. So now we've got something that goes from F builder to F of record. And so we're just gonna wanna, uh, going to want to, let's do this. Um, go back, here we go, pure identity, right. So it was right before is F to to the builder to uh, the record. But let's do so now let's do sequence record. Let's do our example. So we'll have an int. We'll have a B. Uh, let's types forty two B is just uh, hello, and C is, is just uh, true. And we want to get a maybe type out of it. And you'll see there, now we've got our record just without the just wrappers, without the maybe wrappers. So I had to use the type here because it's, it's return type driven. If you do this, then it'll just say you have ambiguous types. And so uh, it, it, it won't, there's some other stuff in here because of PSCI, but it'll, it'll be the, it'll just propagate the constraint and because it doesn't know what type you want out of it. So sometimes you have to add a type signature. But uh, so now if we do this, but then we add a nothing case into it. Um, oh, we don't know what the type is. This is the case where uh, sometimes you have to, if, you don't, if it doesn't know the type, it, sometimes it can't infer it because nothing is a polymorphic type. And so it'll kind of complain. And so sometimes you have to make sure there's a monomorphic type. So let's do Boolean. And then you'll see you get nothing out of it because one of the values is nothing. So uh, again, this is like the complicated, ed this is, or, the, or this is the kind of 
I wouldn't, it's complicated in that it's doing, it's doing something that's really kind of complex and then it's actually discriminating on each type, like each member of it. It's checking whether it's what, whether, whether it's the F that we want and then otherwise falling back to it. So, so it's something fairly complicated. Um, but our actual implementation is very small and, um, and it also shows that you have like this type aligned fold where the type of our accumulator changes and each time, each time it goes over the next member, the type changes. And so it ends up building, you can get this, this builder type that, that accumulates values. And uh, you can do this. So now let's do instead of just, let's do, let's try. I haven't actually had, I haven't tried this before. So hello world. Like that. Let's do another array here. And this one's going to be true and false. And this is going to be array. And you'll see it generates records for each iteration. So you'll see like B is hello, C true, then you hello and false, and then B world see true, B world, see false. And so that's kind of like, uh, that, that's pretty wild, I think. Um, and you can do this with any other, any applicative type. So you could do, uh, I mean, you could do lists. I, I would say like map is the other one that I would want to try, but I don't have that imported. I don't have that installed for this, this project, but it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. And uh, so if we do, even if now, if you change the type here, Maybe I'm not, maybe I use some other container type, just, it, it'll discriminate against that and see that it's not like the array that we want. And you'll see there that it's just generated the one. Now add another. You'll see it generates two types based upon the Bs. So that's kind of my demo of kind of like the crazy stuff you can do with this. And, um, so like, I don't know if, the, let me, I don't know if you, you guys have any other questions about that. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of dense. I, I uh, definitely kind of dense, but uh, that, that, that was amazing. Cool. Some pretty wild stuff you can do with it. And so this H list one, just to, to show you kind of an example, this is like an implementation of, um, is this a package that's, um, so the, no, the H list is the H list is just in the test. This is just used in an example. I, I didn't add this to like any sort of package just because I didn't want to maintain it. Um, but I, this is mainly used for demo and testing purposes. So an H list is kind of like an extensible tuple where you, everything is indexed by some numeric index, not instead of by like a string index. And so the way you do that, the way you have like we want like a type level index in, in that. So while it, cause we can't, if we're indexing into this type level tuple, we can't say, we don't know what's, what type is at what index if we only have a runtime int or something, you know, it, I can't generate a type based upon a runtime value because that would be dependent types. And independently type language, you could do that because you can then like bring that value up and generate and do a type based on that. But so, cause we don't have dependent types. We have to have a type level integer, and then we use, um, we then can reflect that back down to a runtime integer. And so we do that with, our, with this Pino type, and this Pino type is just, or this Pino kind actual, actually, and the types are like S and Z, and so this, just, this builds, so to represent like a number two, it's actually two applications of S. So, so zero, the Z is zero, one is S, zero, two would be another application of S, et cetera. And it just keeps going on. For each one, you just add another wrapper for each number. And so we can use this known Pinot type class to then reflect that to a runtime integer. And so this is the data type. It's just a tuple, but it has this H null type, and we use that to signify the end of the H list. And uh, what our instances, instances do it uses instance chains to kind of do that sort of discrimination. So we're going to, we want to fold over it. And so as long as we don't have an H nil, we can keep folding. And so it just keeps looking for this H nil 
And then once it reaches the H null case, it knows it's at the end of the list. And so then we're done folding or mapping or whatever we're doing. And, uh, and so it's the same idea. Um, and you'll see here, like in these implementations, it calls folding, and that's what it uses to dispatch the folding type class we implemented or the fold, folding with index, index that we uh, implemented. And uh, so there's various tests in here to show this, this is the same idea of building like a show with index and it's just using um, see we're using this Pino type is now our index type instead of symbol or S proxy we're using this Pino type and we use known Pino to reflect our integer back down to the runtime level and show it and so doing that if we we can import that so let's do uh, import uh, test.hlist as th and so if we do like so this show h list so i've built this four element h list here different types and i've called show a h show h list on it so test show two and um, oh that's not that's not doing the index where's the one that does the index show with index so test show oops let's do test show and you'll see here it it reflects the index, this tuple zero foo, tuple 142, tuple two, et cetera. So, so that index, the zero, one, and two, and three, that's, yeah. part, that's part of the instance of the yep. implementation of this folding? It's not so, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, so it builds this type level, this type level number using this Pino kind, and then it uses this known Pino class to reflect it back down to like a, a runtime value. So we have a type that represents 0, 1, 2, 3, et cetera. And then at runtime, we can then build that and uh, get an actual runtime integer to represent that index so we could show it. So that's kind of, yeah. Um, again, the, the idea here is just that we've kind of separated out the process of actually iterating over this H list from the process of just using something of just our, like our accumulator, our folding function, or just our mapping function, which just has to care about each member. We separated the two, so we don't have to build this monolithic type class each time. And so we can kind of like mix and match and combine them and to do different crazy things over them. And so you could do the same thing with like, a, with like the applicative example that we did for records, you could do the same thing with H lists. And so you could generate like permutations of H lists then based upon what, it, like if we have one that's an array or something like that. And so there's, there's lots of cool stuff you can do with that. So I mean, that, the, on the one hand, there, there's a few like really cool like utilities you can do with it, like with like the zip record, map record, stuff like that. Those are, those are actually really useful. Some of them maybe are kind of, uh, are kind of like uh, intellectual exercises, just like, oh, wow, that's like really cool. Like the sequence is actually really, is pretty useful, um, but you can do like all sorts of crazy stuff with it too. Um, but yeah, yeah, so, so maybe some of the downsides I think are, so this is, this is pretty neat. The downsides I think I've kind of like talked about is that actually sometimes writing them, if they get really complicated, the simple cases, like with uh, like our show member, like this is trivial, pretty trivial. And so we just have our constraint and writing, writing things like that with HMAP especially are really easy. And uh, just to stamp these out, it's pretty easy. And using them is pretty easy and the inference is, is pretty good. So like you could, you wouldn't need to even put this in a binding. You could just call HMAP wherever with pure member and it would, it would the inference would work out. Um, zip member is probably all right as well. But the problem you get into then is what are our type errors when something fails, you know? So if we, if we have a zip record, let's try, I don't even know what this will look like, you know. Maybe I'll just do the type. So we'll get a type error. So maybe we'll do zip record A. Instead of being a function, it's just gonna be a value. And then B is our maybe plus one. So this won't work because 12 isn't a function. So we'll apply it to another 12 and then B is going to be 42. And so this will get a type error of some kind. We know this obviously won't work out. And what this will end up telling you 
this isn't actually too bad. What this tells you is, while solving type class constraint, row cons A int to TO, well, A is int. There's no, there's no, if I have an A int, then I can't get a function out of it. And so what that's saying, you kind of have to learn to read this. And um, what this is saying is, what something you could actually do is now then implement an instance chain off of this. And um, you could add like, you could like maybe make up a, a better type error or something. So if there's not like a function in here, maybe we can, let's try that. Let's do our zip record, our zip member. We're gonna do an instance chain else here. Else instance zip member. And we're gonna do row cons. So there's some, there's some B in here, but we don't know what it is. It's not a function obviously, but we wanna generate a type error now. And so we're gonna use, I think it's prim, I don't remember what it is, import prim dot, I think it's type error. And, uh, and we're gonna do te dot fail. There we go, prim dot type error. And fail, um, I'm gonna have to actually look up the documentation, I don't remember what it is. So let's do, uh, Pursuit. Uh, let's do prim. Here's type error. So we so PureScript has these different type classes for generating like type class for generating custom errors. And so fail is a type class that whenever the type checker gets sees that it needs to satisfy a fail constraint, um, it just fails with a custom type error. So this message, which is a type of doc or a kind of doc. So this is like type level string, dealing with type level strings. So you can use quote and text and stuff like that and to build up a, a string. So we're gonna do type me fail and we're gonna do um, te dot text. And so, so we'll say not a function. We wanna append. So te, I think it's beside that with te dot, and we're gonna quote our B type. T, and I think that should work. And I'm just gonna copy this. In some X, it's not gonna end up satisfying, so. Actually, let's do, um, make this void uh, no it doesn't work we'll just make it unit see if this compiles not yet unable to parse oh. all right now let's go to our terminal let's reload it and let's try this again and we'll see Oh no, it didn't work. What am I doing wrong? Anyway. Oh, you know why it doesn't, doesn't work? Ah, man. I thought this would be a cool demo. That's the problem with spur of the moment demos. <laughs> the problem, the reason why it doesn't work is because it's looking up the R type with a constraint. And because there's no backtracking on constraints, it, it already matches on the, instant head, the instance head and sees that it, and then tries to look up this A to B and it won't backtrack to this instance. So man, that's a bummer. <laughs> but uh, if, we, if we did that, then we'd get a really nice, uh, we'd get a nice Does it pick there. this instance once? Um, no, so, so for elements in the collection? No, so, so the issue is type, type class instances are dispatched. It's kind of like pattern matching. And so, Right. There's so it, it basically pattern matches on the types at the type you know at the type level as like if you're thinking of like at the run at the value level you know you pattern match on constructors and it looks at the tag of the constructor to figure it out so it's kind of similar similar idea at the type level in that whenever it's dispatching constraints it looks at our like instance here or the, our definitions and it kind of pattern matches on these on the types of an instance and the problem that we have is that we're not looking up, we're just, we're not, we're pattern matching on zip member, but we're not pattern matching on R. So it matches for all R's. And 
at the runtime level, you'd think, okay, well, if I'm going to do an additional check on R, then I would have a guard. And so a guard lets us attach like a Boolean predicate to a pattern match. And if the guard fails, then it, then it backtracks to the next pattern match. And there's nothing like that. At, we don't have anything like that at the type level. So there's, no, there's not really guards on type classes, dispatching, or on like instance chains. And that's something that, that, that's a feature that can exist, but it's not something that exists, right? We don't have an implementation of that in PureScript. And so you could think of, you could almost think of constraints as additional guards on top of our match. So maybe th there's some, some hypothetical future feature uh, you know, we could then treat like, okay, it will try to like solve these constraints. And if it can't solve them, it's like, it's like failing on a guard and then it could backtrack. And so right now there's a constraint to look up the type of our symbol, this constraint to look up A to B, but it doesn't know, it, it, you know, there, there might be actually, there actually, there might be a way around this. Um, okay. So let's do this. Let's do another, let's do another type class. Um, let's do class and we'll do uh, lookup function. We'll just call it lookup fn. And class lookup fn is gonna take some type a and then it's gonna give us just the output type. So there's not really, it's just a type level function here. And it's, it's actually gonna be kind of closed. It doesn't have any, it can't have evidence. So we'll do lookup fn. And lookup fn just does an A and returns whatever our B type is, whatever we're mapping it to. And this is kind of, this is just a way of kind of like getting around this like dispatch. You can kind of like get around that issue with just having other classes. So we're gonna do lookup fn. We're gonna have our actual lookup fn for a function. And so we're gonna look up, if we do, our a type here this is kind of like a this is basically just a type level equality and um, but we're going to dispatch on this a to b type look up fn and it's just going to yield the a to b type and so look up fn the, the implementation is pretty trivial because it's just identity we don't even have but then we're gonna do an instance chain here. And we're gonna, this is where we're gonna put our fail. Else instance lookup. Else. Let's do this. And that is lookup fn b, and that's just gonna be u it's going to end up failing. It doesn't really matter what the type is. We just need something that has a, a runtime representation unit is a value. It could be anything. Um, we could actually even just make it like an unsafe partial exception or whatever, because it's not something that can occur. And so this is just going to be unit. And so now maybe we'll do, we'll take that as a constraint. So call lookup function lookup. And we're gonna now instead of taking this A to B type, we're gonna do our just an FN type, FN, and then this is gonna be uh, so it looks up the FN type and then asserts that the type is identical, is equal to A to B. And what that means is that now we have to call lookup FN around that. So now, so we don't need this anymore. Now let's try it, let's see if this, all right, so that compiled, now let's try it. Zip record, which map with index, look up FN, error while solving constraint. So I've got some, got something. All right, so we made progress with this type error. Int to t variable sign. Cannot match type unit. All right. So why doesn't that work? It's dispatching on this constructor. Anyway, I may not be able to figure out this, you know, like right now, uh, 
this might need some additional work. But the idea, I think you could, I think you could, I think you could do this to where uh, it fails to solve the constraint. And, um, and uh, I don't know, something to play around with. I, you know, I, I, on the spot, I maybe should have tried this before, but on the spot, I can't, I can't think of, um, Oh, probably because it doesn't know what it is. There's some, there's some some issue where it doesn't know what it is, and it might need like a type annotation or something. Um, hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll have to defer that. <laughs> kind of a bummer, man. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I think there's a way to do it. Uh, maybe I'll try. Maybe I'll try to. I'll I'll play with it and see. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's all I have. That was really amazing. <clears throat> have you done the uh, Scala um, shapeless? shapeless stuff? No, I haven't really done. Um, I haven't really done much with Scala. I don't, I don't really use Scala, so. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the yeah. First I, I, I think it's that. I think it's a similar idea, and it's like doing sort of these sorts of like transfer like generic transformations over heterogeneous stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's really nice to have uh, the ability to work with heterogeneous data structures because, that, like, a lot of dynamic languages, they just, people they love to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, so data structure with all sorts of stuff in it, and yeah. And what's what's also cool? So something else that's kind of neat about the instances is that there's like a default instant, like an implementation for uh, like the folding class. So the folding class is how we dispatch like our folding function or our mapping or mapping is for dispatching our mapping function. And you can, there's an instance there for just the function data type or the function type. And, and uh, if you try to map, just if you just try to apply the function, like just a normal function, it treats that as if you have a homogeneous record or a homogeneous something else. So you can use it you can just you can just map with with an existing function so i guess I, but uh if you look at that's something that's in the documentation so if you look at this how to use hmap so there's this kind of explains that you can get like the same behavior of a functor like the existing like functor instance it's kind of like this is kind of like a like a super like a super set of functor and so if you add this app new type and just use a function, then you get like an existing, uh, the existing functor instance for a type. So any, any homogeneous type can, can, you can treat it as heterogeneous, but it's only got one, one type. So it's still homogeneous, but mm -hmm. it's, it's heterogeneous with only one type. So, you know, and so if you have, and then if you have a homogeneous record, you can just use a function type like this, this add one and show. And, uh, and it work, and it just kind of works out as long as everything's the same type within the record. So, so yeah, some there's yeah some cool stuff with it. But I, I haven't really used it that much like in production. But I really like the uh, that sequence one. So like sequencing a record where it just picks out like the thing, the fields that map to the that are the functor that I want or the applicative that I want. And it can kind of it discriminates on those, and like I've, I've I've done that a lot at work with with like different records. So, like we've got a lot of generated types from a uh, from like our backend, and it's it's just based off of like uh, like gRPC protobufs. And so protobufs, like everything's kind of like implicitly optional, so like nullable, and so that that gets decoded as a maybe, but a lot but most they're always there. It's just like the encoding can't represent something that's not nullable. And uh, so like in a few places we do that where we'll, we'll like remap a record in the same type. We're, we'll remap, we'll map this record representation and kind of take out all the maybes and get just like a maybe record out of it. And so that's, that's like this, the sequence record especially is something that can just do that automatically. Because whereas before we were doing it as like kind of like these ad hoc transformations and doing that. But that's, so there's some there's some pretty cool applications based on it. Uh, I have a question. Like anytime I see a bunch of like some type classes like this, um, I have to ask about laws. <laughs> so like for like the um, a, like a function that does the mapping over a heterogeneous data structure, um, like 
there's not a heterogeneous like functor class. So then you wouldn't have like functor laws for it. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's what HMAP is. HMAP is essentially just a functor. Um, well, there's only so much you can do with it. And so you could, you could specify a law that where if I prov provide an identity mapping, then I get the same structure back. So, I mean, you could, you could apply the same functor laws to them. Mm -hmm. I haven't done that. And so, I mean, there's, two, there's lots of ways to kind of like think about type classes and instances. And so like, as far as like an abstraction capability, type classes are good to have laws. So like we think of functor as an abstraction. And so, or, you know, all those sorts of things, they, they have laws as abstractions. But um, type classes are also just the way that we hook into the type system. And so, you know, anytime we want to like mm -hmm. compute types, you use type classes to do that. You have to use type classes. That's the only point of extension in the type system. And so some of these aren't like these mappings, like these instances of mappings. They're not really like lawful. It's not really a way to say like these, you can't really say these, what's a lawful implementation of mapping. This it doesn't really make sense because all mapping does is compute a new type and a new value based on it. And so in the functional dependencies kind of, kind of like specify that, like the functional dependencies say like, okay, we're going to determine this output type based upon these input types. And so there's not really like laws to state about something like mapping. Like you can say something about HMAP, you can, you can supply some like functor like laws and same with H foldable. You can, you can apply some of the same, like foldable doesn't really have very interesting laws either, but um, you know, you can, you can kind of apply the same sorts of things to them, but, but the other things like mapping and folding and stuff like that, while they're type classes, they're only, they only exist as type classes to extend the type system and to like dispatch and get dispatch these values into map types to new types. And so they're really just fun. They're really just type level, they're type functions. And so it's, it doesn't really necessarily make sense to say like, what are the laws of something like that? Just because they, they don't exist as an abstraction on their own. Mapping isn't really an abstraction that you use. It's something that HMAP uses to dispatch types. And so um, I, th I think that's, that's an, the way to look at like those things. So like, HMAP might have laws, but mapping doesn't really have laws because it's just something that HMAP uses. If that makes sense. I, mm -hmm. I think the instance chains, uh, the instance chain examples really illustrate that um, that well. The idea of the um, yeah uh, instances as type level functions. Yeah, because you're it's just, it's like going back to the pattern matching idea is like when dispatching type class constraints, like the type system is essentially pattern matching on these types and it just, and it looks at them. It tries to look up an instance that matches what this type has and, and uh, it uses that to dispatch the implementation. And so the instance chain, it just, it gives you, it's, it doesn't back, you don't have like the guard sort of behavior, but it's as if you're pattern matching, like writing a function that pattern matches. And then, but all you can do is pattern match on the tags of data types is essentially what the power that the type system gives you. Right. Yeah. I really like the, um, the uh, default cases in there, those error cases bottoming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That that's cool. So you can essentially implement like a closed type class that only admits the types you care about and then fails for everything else. So if you, if you add an else instance chain at the end with a fail, you can, you can then tell the user, okay, well this, you can't implement, you can't do anything else with this. You can't extend it, you know? Um, and so that's also really helpful. Yeah, I, I really, I, I'm gonna have to like play with the uh, the type error on the function one, like it, because because you want good type errors too, and like I feel like so the row cons type error that we got wasn't, I didn't feel like it was too bad, um, just because it actually tells you like what property you're at, what property, it, what the type it tried to match at, and then what the type that it actually got. So it tells you all the information that you'd get in a type error. It's just put in a row cons type class. So you look at it and at first you're like, I don't really know what I'm looking at. Why am I getting this row cons thing? And so uh, I, I really want to be able, I want to really want to see if I can get like the type class machinery to work, like the type error machinery to work that out. So you can get like a nice type error. Like, so you can say like at property, whatever I expected a function and got something else. Um, but I, I, th I think it should be possible, but yeah. So that, that's the other thing, it's just type errors. Next talk. <laughs> all right, well, that's, that's all I got, so. Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot, Nate, for taking the time to share all this stuff.
Yeah. 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 One thing I wonder about is like, th this seems like a more uh, powerful um, abstraction than like this, the more specific case of uh, a data structure having all the same type. Um, so. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a superset, but um, the type inference around it is obviously poorer. So it has to work out more constraints. It can't infer as much. Like when you just have a homogeneous case, it's really easy to infer everything and everything works out really easily. And so while it is a superset, um, it doesn't, it oftentimes doesn't infer very well. So like if you don't supply a specifically monomorphic function, <laughs> you know, to it, then it'll, it'll probably complain and stuff like that. So you, you might end up having, you'll, you, you'll always end up having to use more type signatures than you would otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. yeah, really interesting stuff. Really interesting stuff. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know how much longer we want to keep you, <laughs> but no. uh, I, yeah, I, I think anything else. Just end. if you have any other questions. Yeah, any other questions? All right, no questions. Yeah, <laughs> no, I got nothing. Thanks a lot, Nate. That was really All cool. Right. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. See you guys next time. Yep. Bye, all. Yeah.